What's the story of the Bible? Today, we're going to take a bird's eye view of the story. So as we explore it together, we don't risk missing the forest for the trees. Thanks for listening to The Bible Brief. Before we launch into the story, I'd like to provide the construct that we'll use as we move into the big story of the Bible. It's going to be like this. Sprint, run, jog, walk. First, we're going to sprint through the Bible. We're going to spend today and tomorrow going through the summary of the corest of the core of the Bible story, skipping everything except the most absolutely necessary elements for a quick understanding. This will be this episode and the next episode. After our sprint, we're going to run. We'll go just a bit slower than the sprint as we pick up more details and events from the Bible story. This will probably take 10 episodes or so. After our sprint and our run, then we're going to slow down even a bit more for a jog. This jog will take several more episodes to fill in gaps that we won't have an opportunity to look into while we're sprinting or running. And finally, we'll do a walkthrough of the Bible. This will essentially be a summary of each book of the Bible as it pops up chronologically so that we can know how each book of the Bible fits into the overall story and structure. With that groundwork complete, let's get started with our sprint through the Bible. Don't worry, if it feels like a whirlwind, we'll go over all of this in our run-through, then our jog, and finally our walk. Are you ready to sprint? Let's go. The Bible begins with Genesis 1.1. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. With this beginning, the Bible launches into the grand narrative of God's creation of everything, including his culminating creation of mankind. He creates the man, Adam, and the woman, Eve. After creating this first couple, God places them in a lush garden full of all necessary provision for life. Yet he gives the couple a rule. He says that they can eat from any fruit of any tree in the garden except for one particular tree. He says that when they eat of that tree, that they will die. With this, the Bible narrative becomes a little bit more complicated. And we're going to focus on some things in the Old Testament today that we can summarize using four P words. The problem, the promise, the plan, and the prophets. Using those four words, we're going to get through the whole Old Testament and the rest of this episode. So first, let's talk about the problem. As you might have guessed, given the length of the Bible, the story does not end with Adam and Eve's obedience to God's one rule. Instead, an enemy of God in the form of a serpent deceives them into eating from that forbidden tree. Previously, the humans had only known the good that God had created, but eating the fruit, the humans would know evil too. This deceitful enemy is later identified in the Bible as Satan, and he is the main villain of the Bible story. Upon eating the fruit from the tree, Adam and Eve immediately feel death, a feeling unlike anything they had ever experienced. Instead of closeness to God, they felt separation. Just as physical death separates body from spirit, so this spiritual death that they experienced severed their close relationship with God. There was now a separation. Confusion and accusation replaced prior contentment and peace. And now, instead of living forever, they would suffer physical death as well. Spiritual death and physical death become the rule of the human race. Following their disobedient sin, God announces judgments upon Adam and Eve and the serpent. Yet, in the midst of these penalties and judgments, God's mercy and love shines through. And it's here that we're introduced to the second P, the promise. He announces that a descendant of Eve will defeat the serpent. At this point in the Bible narrative, we get the seed of a promise that expands through the whole Old Testament. We begin to see the picture of a figure who will be established by God to defeat the serpent, this ancient villain Satan who attempts insurrection against God's rule. We come to know this person who will defeat the serpent as the Messiah, which is a Hebrew term that we'll explain further in another podcast. So we have the problem human sin and disobedience, and we have the promise that God will defeat evil with a descendant of Eve. The third P is the plan. Over the next many years in the Bible narrative, 
God expresses a more complex plan to rescue humanity. And in the Old Testament, that plan largely revolves around this Messiah figure, who we come to find out will come from a particular nation of the world, a nation known as Israel. Midway through the book of Genesis, this nation, Israel, is essentially birthed out of a promise that God makes. He says that it will be through this particular nation, Israel, that the Messiah will come, and that this person will bless the whole world. As the nation of Israel expands into a larger people group through the Old Testament, we see them blessed by God with prosperity, and we also see this future figure, the Messiah figure, he gains further identification. We see that he will be a prophet who will speak the words of God, and we see that this Messiah will be a king who has an everlasting kingdom. As the nation expands and achieves more and more success, expectation brims for the coming of the Messiah. However, in the midst of this success, the nation Israel forgets that God was the one who caused their success and prosperity. They forgot that he was the one who chose them and made them successful. And they disobey God. They disobey the rules that God had given them. Sadly, the sin and disobedience of Adam and Eve is repeated in the nation chosen by God. And as a result of their disobedience, they are exiled from their land, just as Adam and Eve were exiled from the lush garden that God had placed them in. However, despite their disobedience, we come to the fourth P. God gives hope of the future through prophets. In this time of exile away from Israel's land, God uses these prophets to give people further hope of the Messiah who will come. Now, prophet can be a loaded word to us today, so I want to explain it just briefly. It's best to think of biblical prophets like this. They are people who speak God's words on God's behalf with God's approval. Again, the prophets are people who speak God's words on God's behalf with God's approval. Sometimes prophets speak of the future, like we might ordinarily think of a prophet. But oftentimes in the Bible, prophets also speak to their own generation of people who God wants to give a particular message to. Okay, so like I was saying, God commissions these prophets to express further things about the Messiah. We learn that the Messiah will be born of a virgin, that he will be from a particular city in Israel, and that he will suffer for the people's sins. And yet, that he will be king and deliver ultimate defeat to Satan, the evil adversary of God. As the Old Testament closes, we see the people of Israel return to their land after their period of exile, but awaiting the fulfillment of God's promises of the Messiah. So let's briefly review the four P's. Problem, promise, plan, and prophets. The problem. After creating the world and placing the first humans in a lush garden, the humans disobey God and become corrupt with sin. They become spiritually separated from God and subject to physical death. They are cast out of the garden. Promise. God announces that he will send a descendant of the woman to defeat the villain, Satan. Plan. Many years later, God creates a nation from which this descendant, the Messiah, will come. This nation is Israel, and much of the Old Testament describes the history of this nation. Finally, prophets. After the nation of Israel disobeys God's commands, God sends prophets to explain that Israel has been cast out of their land for disobeying God. Further, God uses the prophets to provide more description of the plan of Messiah and how he will save the people from sin. So we have these four P's that may help you as you think about the Old Testament. Problem, promise, plan, and prophets. As the Old Testament comes to a close, questions enter our minds. Despite rebelling before, will Israel learn to accept God's rule? How will Messiah save the world? How will he defeat his adversary? As we continue our sprint through the Bible, we'll look into these questions. Can't wait to continue with you next time on The Bible Brief. The Bible Brief is brought to you by the Bible Literacy Foundation, dedicated to helping people like you learn the Bible. 
Are you enjoying the podcast? One of the best ways for the show to grow is for you to share it with a friend. Will you do that today? We'd love to help more people understand the life-changing story and message of the Bible. Thank you for your support and thank you for listening. Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2022.